This summer, I took my daughters to the Kennedy Space Center. <laughs> we got to see a rocket launch. We yeah, also we got to feel like how the astronauts got to feel like and how they go in space. You're right. The bus tour was really cool, and we loved going out and seeing the vehicle assembly building, and they talked a lot about how big it was. But I was very curious on the architecture side of things, and it's a pretty cool story. So let's do this. The vehicle assembly building, or the VAB. Let's learn some behind the scenes of this iconic architecture. <laughs> let's learn some of the stories behind, behind this <laughs> iconic architecture. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Just months after the famed Kennedy speech, in 1963, NASA contracted the New York City architecture firm Max O. Urban to design and build the VIB. But it wasn't a VAB yet. A building like this had never been done before. Urban walked over to the desk of 25-year-old architect Richard Bergman and asked him to make a sketch for a building that could house rockets. It's 9 a.m. in the morning, and they were pitching to famed German aerospace engineer Werner von Braun at 2 p.m. that same day. Unsure on the scale of a rocket, Bergman was told, quote, it needs to fit the Seagram building inside of it. So he walked up the street to Park Avenue, and at 38 stories tall, it's 515 feet in height. So Bergman drafted a really simple concept of a tall, one-story building that went up 525 feet with four work bays bundled together. During the pitch, Von Braun said he would like the four bays position in a row, but they explained that Florida has hurricanes, and a building that long would essentially become a sale. Von Braun awarded the project as presented. Construction began just a few months later, with driving the first steel foundation piles on August 2nd, 1963. And since it's only one story and doesn't have multiple floors to help support the building, the VAB has more structures of steel and cement than any other building in the world. It was built using 98,000 tons of steel, 65,000 cubic yards of concrete, and 45,000 steel beams. It's really just a huge open space with a heavy steel skeleton. The crawler transporter, mobile launch platform, and the rocket could all be built vertically before being rolled out to the launch pad. It was completed in 1965 with 129,428,000 cubic feet of interior space. It was used for the Saturn V rockets for the Apollo missions. It then served the space shuttle program and now SpaceX and the Artemis missions. Over the 60 years, it has only had minor damage from hurricanes and has only needed to be upgraded for 21st century needs. The building remains more or less as is designed from that sketch done in just a few hours by 25-year-old Bergman.